Well, normally we're here at Memorial Stadium on a Saturday to cover college football, a game that is. Today, a different story as Mike Riley relieved of his duties as head coach of the Nebraska football team after going 19-19 and after three seasons. Unique setup today. Bill Moose met the media for about 40, 45 minutes, and then Mike Riley actually spoke to uh, the gathered media around the state. What was your impressions not only of Bill Moose, but first, let's talk about Mike Riley. Yeah, you, you, I, I think we've been around a lot of these situations covering sports, and you've done it, Andy, mm -hmm. on the professional scene. It's, it's extremely rare to have happen what we saw today for Mike Riley to come up after he was fired to address the media for about 15 minutes um, and then shake hands, talk to people, thank them. Um, you know, it, it was emotional. I mean, mm -hmm. I, it was hard not to have a little tear in your eye um, as you heard Mike Riley um, conduct himself in the manner he did. He just unfortunately didn't get the job done as a football coach here, but he leaves here, I believe, with the respect of all Nebraskans, with how he conducted himself, how he operated as a coach, and I believe he'll always be welcome back here um, no matter what. And um, if he ever wants to be recognized in the stadium years down the road, um, he will always be welcome back to this state. Yep, just simply didn't work out. You rarely see a head coach who gets fired at the – not only do a news conference, but do a news conference – at the same place where the guy who fired you just did a news conference. That was unique, no, no doubt about it. Bill Moose, though, had some specifics in mind in terms of why he made the move he did on this Saturday. Yeah, of the five games Bill Moose evaluated, three were blowout losses, Minnesota, Penn State, and Iowa. And you could argue that Nebraska – could have at, should have at minimum been three and two on that stretch, if not a logistic or legitimate shot of being four and one. Um, when you just looked at the matchups and the talent on both rosters, uh, Nebraska should have been able to beat Northwestern, arguably Purdue, and uh, I'm sorry, Minnesota, and they, they could they could have easily won against Iowa, and um, it, it just fell apart. And you know when you have blowout losses, Andy, in seven of your final 18 games as a head coach. It, especially at a place like this where it's very important, where like one out of 19 people in the state are in the stadium every Saturday, um, you're, you're just not going to make it here when you have a season like what we went through this year, arguably the worst season in the modern era of Nebraska football. Yeah, Bill Moose says no one likes four and eight, and even said most people are disappointed in eight and four. He said, so I want to get it to a point where we're disappointed if we go eight and four. Which I thought was a great comment. And, and now moving forward, who do you look for in terms of not only candidates, but let's talk characteristics of that candidate moving forward. Yeah, I think to me, they have a very good idea of what direction they're going to go. When he said Trent Bray was not going to go, going to go into living room starting Sunday or Monday, and Nobody else was going to be going in the living rooms. Nobody else really would be doing a lot of interaction with the recruits with this new December 20th signing day or 22nd signing day looming. It tells me they have something pretty close to being done. I, I just feel you, you can't. If you don't have an idea of what's happening, you can't just leave recruits hanging for eight days or seven days or whatever. Um, so I think that's what's happening right now. And um, I think it's clear. Scott Frost, to me, seems like the guy at this point. I would be surprised if, if it's not him, um, just from the things I've heard starting on Friday night after the game um, and then his non answer on if he was in Philadelphia and that was something that was going out this week a lot of people have been saying that Bill Moose went to Philly to meet with Scott Frost or somebody when they were in Temple playing that game mm -hmm. um, the same weekend as Nebraska playing at Penn State he cha changed the subject to cheesesteaks and, and would not give no I was not in Philadelphia as an answer which I, I was kind of like wow Mm -hmm. Maybe that rumor did have a little bit of legs to it. Um, and that's the thing that's hard when, you know, I've been through a number of these. Mm -hmm. You have so many guys that know a guy mm -hmm. and you don't know what is true and what is false. So you have to really have some trusted people um, because you have a lot of people that come to you with information that they say they've heard or that. But I think cultural fit, Andy, when you talk about what they need, mm -hmm. it's got to be a guy that really can build this place with the right kind of culture um, to, to, to be the, the program it needs to be. Were you surprised at how candid he was, Bill Moose was, even taking specific candidate questions? I think my favorite That's moment rare. was when he said that, uh, what did you think of the Iowa game? He goes, well, I had two runs. Right, right, right. <laughs> but, no, he, yeah, he, um, he brought it. I mean, that was one of the most impressive press conferences. I agree. 
for the situation we're in mm -hmm. that I've ever been around. Mm -hmm. Unscripted, usually you get a guy, ADs come up with this state of the union script mm -hmm. that maybe they didn't even write mm -hmm. and they get up there and read it and try to sound stern and important. Bill Moose can get up there without a script, Andy Kendi style, and just yeah, and just rip and just rip off. I mean, uh, a speech. I mean, it was it was pretty impressive all around. And yeah, taking questions about candidates and throwing out a line or two about each coach, um, talking about connections to Kevin Sumlin yeah, and yeah. other player guys like that. It was very interesting. It's very interesting. And he did say there was no specific timetable mentioning specifically he wants to be respectful and not be a distraction to the coaches that are still playing. Oh, by the way, Central Florida has a championship <laughs> game in their conference next week. I mean, that's pretty obvious. It is an 11 a.m. game. Mm -hmm. So um, it will be – this week will be interesting how this all plays out because if he verbally agrees to something – you know all it takes is one person for that to get out. Right. And it, so it, it will be very hard if he verbally were to be the guy to agree or sign something but wants to keep it quiet until after the game on Saturday. I think something's going to get out this week. I, I just have a hard time um, not thinking that's the case. So this week will be fun. It's going to be uh, really interesting to see kind of – the next few days and what they bring with candidates with Scott Frost and, and, and the SEC. I mean, this is when you look at the major jobs that have opened right now, um, there are as many four to five million dollar jobs open this year as you're going to see at one time. And the SEC, remember what he said? Bill Moose said they the, eat SEC, their young. the SEC eats their young. And Bill Moose also said that he's done doing interviews until the uh, time that he introduces us to the next head football coach at Nebraska. So it'll be a quiet week, but of we're thinking there might be fireworks as of next weekend or maybe the week after, but, man, stay tuned. Stay logged on to Husker Online. Yeah, absolutely. Buckle up. It's going to be a fun ride. For Sean Callahan, I'm Andy Kitty.